Okay, so I would like to present here uh, space-related activities at the Department of Geophysics at the Faculty of Mathematics and Physics, uh, Charles University. We are situated in the uh, TREA campus here in Prague. Our faculty comprises, or our department comprises, about 17 members uh, and seven doctoral students. We offer almost 80 courses in undergraduate and graduate uh, programs in geophysics and physics uh, of the Earth and planets. We are mostly a theoretical department or modeling department, but we also have some observational activities. We, we run a network of seismic and GNSS uh, stations uh, in the Corinth Gulf. We have experience with uh, ESA projects, uh, in particular related to the SWARM satellite mission by ESA, uh, SWARM Plus Ocean, which was an STSE project, or we are members of the SWARM DISC consortium. Uh, we have a decent departmental cluster where we run uh, some of our simulations, including uh, graphical acceleration, and we have also a lot of experience with uh, HPC uh, calculations, mostly uh, at the uh, IT4I center in Ostrava. We cooperate with international partners in uh, Zurich, uh, in Copenhagen. Uh, our planetologists, they work with uh, colleagues uh, in Nantes and uh, NASA. And our seismologists are involved uh, in cooperation with the University of uh, Patras. Our uh, main uh, subject is modeling of uh, a broad range of uh, geophysical phenomena uh, from earthquake source physics, uh, seismic and EM wave propagation, and uh, thermal evolution and deformation of the Earth and planets and moons on different scales, and uh, interpretation of gravitational and electromagnetic fields. I will now show several uh, applications of our research, including some outlook for the future. I will start uh, with the, with the uh, se seismic uh, results, with the application of uh, GNSS uh, data in uh, inversion of the seismic source, uh, where you can use actually the displacement or the uh, long-term tectonic uh, deformation observed by the uh, GPS station to constrain the uh, seismic source. And we would like also to use uh, 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 interferometry uh, synthetic aperture radar uh, data for these uh, inversions, as you, as you can see here uh, for the case of uh, Aquila uh, earthquake. And uh, uh, methodologically, we would like to move from the ongoing uh, so-called kinematic uh, seismic source inversions, where you try only to describe the slip velocity uh, on the fault plane, to more complex so-called dynamical uh, source models, which are based on uh, constitutive uh, friction laws. And uh, we would like to include the GNSS and INSAR data into these inversions with some additional modifications and development with respect to error propagation, Bayesian methods. And of course, we are not restricted only to the uh, current Gulf, to our observatory network. This can be applied anywhere. Another topic that we work on is the uh, study of the electrical conductivity of the Earth mantle by electromagnetic induction method. And uh, we use for this the time variations of the geomagnetic field, in this case in the magnetosphere, which uh, penetrates down into the deep lower mantle. And we can try to interpret these time variations in terms of uh, 3D structure of the mantle uh, conductivity, which is an important parameter related to temperature, chemical composition, water content, and so on. Uh, so far we work with mostly with swarm data, but there are some future uh, options also for macro or nanomaxat data or even reprocessing of so-called platform uh, magnetometers. Very similar problem, but on slightly uh, different frequencies with shallower resolution in the upper mantle uh, is the problem where the inducing the external field is actually coming from the tides in the Earth's ocean. Uh, the water flow interacts with the magnetic field of the Earth and creates signals which penetrate into the upper mantle and transition zone. And again, we can interpret these signals in terms of conductivity and in the next plane in terms of uh, thermochemical state of the, of the mantle. Staying with the oceans, we also are involved in modeling of the uh, long time variations of the global ocean uh, circulation. We can do both ocean modeling and EM induction modeling. And we would like to 
uh, detect these signals uh, in satellite uh, geomagnetic data, like swarm data, which has not yet been done by uh, anyone. And the ultimate goal for this uh, project is to try to monitor long-term variability of the ocean currents by satellite magnetic measurements. Moreover, we would like to expand this knowledge also beyond Earth to the uh, icy moons uh, of Jupiter, in particular Europa, Callisto and Ganymede, where this EM methods were used uh, in detection of the subsurface oceans, but we would like to take it further. For example, at Europa, we would like to test if we can actually detect even this motional induction effect, this effect driven by the flows of the oceans in magnetic data. We also study uh, propagation of electromagnetic waves. Uh, our department is a cradle of uh, seismic rate theory, seismic rate methods, which have been now applied also for EM waves, uh, propagation in heterogeneous and uh, bi anisotropic media with attenuation and many other theoretical and practical complications. And this can be useful to study propagation of the EM waves in interplanetary plasma in the outer, outer space. A final slide dedicated to uh, EM methods uh, deals with uh, ground penetrating radar, or in this case, it can be called ice penetrating radar, because Clara Klauslova studied penetration of the radar waves uh, into the Europa's ice shell, and whether it can detect the subsurface ocean of Europa or presence of uh, brines in the shallow ice layers. Of course, the hotter the ice, the larger the attenuation, but in cold ice, you should be able to detect uh, very well the, the presence of brines and uh, detection of the, of the subsurface ocean up to the depth of 15 kilometers. And now we are working on the on similar study also for the uh, Enceladus. Uh, speaking about Enceladus, it's been subject of several papers by mostly by Andrzej Souček and Marie Běhonková. Uh, dedicated to the uh, short-scale uh, events, to the tidal deformation uh, of the uh, ice shell and the effects of the variable thickness and uh, the effect of the friction uh, along the falls, these famous, famous uh, tiger stripes in the southern hemisphere of, of uh, Enceladus. And, of course, we would like to see uh, whether these effects would be detectable by uh, future uh, satellite uh, or interplanetary missions. And we would like also to look at the deformation and stress at the different uh, time scales and uh, look at the conditions for initiations of these, of these faults. Maria Bihonko has also worked on uh, Europa on the uh, production of melt. This is a study which works on much longer time scales of billions of years. And due to the heating, uh, radiogenic and uh, tidal dissipation, it's, there can be production of, of melt uh, in, in Europa's mantle, and it can be also related to possible volcanic activity and its detection by trying to detect some uh, gases uh, by future, uh, future uh, missions. There are also possible improvements with respect to the melt modeling and to couple the thermal and orbital evolution of, of Europa. On Titan, Jakub Kvorka and Andrzej Čarek have uh, looked at the uh, modeling of the heat flow coming from the subsurface ocean. And they've actually shown that uh, in areas of large heat flow, you, you can have uh, thinning of the ice layer due to melting. And uh, this effect is very nice confirmed if you compare the heat flow from the numerical simulations of the oceans with uh, long wavelength uh, zonal topography. And there is very strong anti-correlation because where we have large heat flow, there is less topography uh, on, the, on the surface. And of course, we could take it further by using our experiments from the Earth ocean modeling uh, by including salts, advection of salts, multi-phase flows, and other effects into, into the, the physics of the icy, uh, icy moon. And my last, last slide is dedicated to uh, exoplanets, uh, in particular to the studies of their spin orbital uh, frequencies. 
and uh, looking at the feedback between internal rotation and orbital evolution through tides. And in future, we would like to look uh, also at more complex models with melt and interactions of multiple planets through tides or uh, tides in planets around binary, uh, binary stars. So that was an overview of the research carried out at our department, and I thank you for your attention.